Over 18,000 have tried to flee in, or have fled into Bangladesh. But those in some ways are the most fortunate. Thousands of others are stranded in the no man's land between Myanmar and Bangladesh as the military continues its security operation trying to find those Rohingya insurgents responsible for last week's attack. Now, I spoke to a 19-year-old Rohingya boy uh, yesterday who fled his village over the weekend after the military started firing indiscriminately upon villagers, killing two of his neighbours and burning uh, all the houses. Yesterday, he and 2,000 others had sought refuge in another village, which had then been encircled by the military and who were setting fire to houses within the vicinity. They are trapped, they are distressed, and he said that some are choosing suicide over an encounter with the military. Now, officially, the death toll is just over 100, but I think as more stories like this start to emerge from a kind state, we can expect that number to increase. I think it's fair to say the government are more interested in appeasing the extreme nationalist forces within Myanmar than trying to find a peaceful resolution to this crisis. Aung San Suu Kyi, the de facto leader, has uh, demanded all media refer to Rohingya insurgents as terrorists. She has also accused the international aid community of supporting those so-called terrorists. Now, her terminology, her rhetoric, mirrors almost exactly that used by the Mabita, the Buddhist nationalist who yesterday at a rally called for NGOs to be expelled, for military rule to be established, and for Buddhist sovereignty in Rakhine State. So I think that the uh, government is actually inflaming the situation and actively trying to turn public opinion against the Rohingya.